Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will address a topic that most of you have questions about. DevOps versus SRE, that is Site Reliability Engineering. There are four common questions that people keep asking me in this space. That is the DevOps versus SRE space. Number one is what is the clear difference between DevOps and SRA? Abhishek, can you explain this with an example? Sure, I'll do that. Number two is which technology has the better future? So does DevOps has a better future or SRA has a better future? Number three is Abhishek, this is my skill set. Should you think, I mean, do you think should I move to DevOps or should I move to SRA? So again, I'll help you with this. I'll tell you what is the required skill set for DevOps and what is the required skill set for SRE. Number four is which technology offers better packages. So let's try to understand all of these questions in as detailed way as possible. So please watch this video till the end. Let's start with question number one. What is the difference between DevOps and SRE? So I'll explain this with an example. And let me tell you that on this channel, there are almost like 260, 270 videos. And most of these videos are based on DevOps and cloud. So if you are looking to learn DevOps and if you are searching for any playlist on DevOps, definitely you can go through the channel and most likely that you will find the required playlist. Okay. Now, so if I have to explain in a nutshell with an example, so let's take Instagram as an example, right? So let's say Instagram is built with three microservices. So obviously three is not the actual number. So there are hundreds of microservices that Instagram uses, but let's say there are three microservices. So there are three development teams that are working on this Instagram application. And obviously what these developers do is they work on the features, they work on the bug requests or bug fixes or any kind of, uh, development related to the application. So let's say I'm one of the developer and I'm working on these changes. So I made the required changes and push these changes to the version control system, right? That's not it, right? So I am one of the developers. I developed a feature. I push the changes to the version control system, but how will millions of Instagram users receive this request, right? So this code changes from the version control system. It has to reach the production system and these days most of the production systems are based on kubernetes or kubernetes distributions it can be eks or it can be openshift anything but devops is about reducing the time taken from moving the application from the version control system to the production system let's say kubernetes so to move these changes from vs version control system to the Kubernetes cluster, there are multiple stages involved and multiple environments involved, right? In each environment, that is developer environment, staging environment, production environment, there are multiple stages that are involved. Okay. So these stages can be unit testing the changes, end to end testing the changes, verifying the code quality, building the package, right? Scanning the created package and deploying the package onto the Kubernetes system and this happens across multiple environments again. So if there is no DevOps involved to move this code changes, like if Instagram developer has developed a feature in January, you know, it will take the end users to reach these code changes. Probably they'll reach these changes in, I mean, they'll get these changes in April or May or June, but in real time, that's not the case. So, you know, if this person is making the changes, Customers or users have to see the changes as soon as possible. So DevOps helps there. How? By writing CI CD pipelines, by creating the required infrastructure, right? That can be infrastructure automation, by creating the required configuration, that is configuration management. If end environment is Kubernetes, managing and creating the Kubernetes related things, creating containers for these microservices. So these are the roles and responsibilities of DevOps engineer. Now, what about SRE? This is interesting, right? Many people are looking forward for it. 
I'll explain again in a very simple way. So let's say all these features of Instagram are delivered. And right now we are all using Instagram, right? Millions of users are using Instagram concurrently. That means all of us are using Instagram parallelly. So I'm using Instagram, you are using Instagram, but every single day, Instagram is up and running. That means Instagram is always available. And second thing is Instagram is always reliable also. That means today from my mobile, if I'm sending a request to Instagram, I'll get the response reliably. That means I'll get the response as soon as possible. You know, in fraction of seconds, I'll get the response. And each and every time, like personally, if I'm scrolling through the reels, I'm sending multiple requests to the Instagram. And every single time, I'm getting the response as soon as possible. That means the system is not only available, but it is also very reliable. Now, how does these things happen? So there is a SRE team. They are doing few things that makes this system available and reliable. What are those things? So SRE engineers create the required monitoring patterns, right? So they set up a lot of monitoring. They set up a lot of alerts and, you know, they design the required systems to make this production system always available and reliable. Let me give examples. So, you know, if there is users for your company, okay? So let's say you are selling Amazon to one of the uh, customers and let's say you own Amazon. So SRE engineers in your uh, Amazon organization, they will make sure that the Amazon web services, so it can be S3 bucket or EKS. So, you know, for the customers, these systems are available and reliable all the time. And what they will do for that is they will set up some monitoring and, you know, they will continuously monitor how is the Amazon web service, let's say S3 bucket is responding to the request. And for some reason, if S3 is not responding, you know, if required response is 0.1 seconds and for some reason it took 0.15 seconds. So SRE, what they'll do is immediately using the scripts, using the monitoring that they have set up, they'll send out alarms and there will be some uh, production support team. And after that, there will be development teams who will get these required alerts and immediately they will start working on these alerts and they will make sure the system is back to normal, right? There have to be someone who has to do it and they are the SRE engineers. So what is the primary thing that they do is they set up the required monitoring, right? They set up the required alerts. They prepare the required SLA documents. That is the service level agreements. They write the required objectives and to meet the objectives, they create the service level indicators. Of course, in this video, I cannot go in detail about what is SLA, SLO, SLI. I created a video on that and I'll put the link in the description. But these are the responsibilities of SRE engineer. So if I have to explain in one single line, so the features of Instagram, if someone is writing the new features, DevOps is responsible in delivering these features to the end users as soon as possible by automating the developer operations in between. SRE is responsible for keeping the system available and reliable. If you watch Hotstar during India-Pakistan match, you know, the system is always available and reliable. You not only see the match, but you see the match with good quality output, right? Every time someone is watching it, you are sending a request to it and you are getting the response back reliably. Got it? So this is a clear difference between DevOps and SRE. Now you might ask here, Abhishek, in my organization, the designation is SRE, but I'm doing the DevOps job. Or the designation is DevOps, but I'm doing the SRE job. Now I agree with this. I agree this to a point because right now, many organizations has not implemented the SRE culture to the fullest. I can also say many organizations do not understand this culture to the fullest, right? People talk about SRE, but many people don't know the actual implementation of SRE. That is because, you know, SRE is uh, something that is evolving. There are some companies like Google, Netflix, Instagram, uh, YouTube. So they have implemented SRE to the fullest, but 
again there are some startups mncs who are trying to build this culture and it will take some time to build the sre culture similar to devops right so devops was there from last 15 years or 12 years 13 years but very few companies have adopted devops 10 years back and the adoption has gradually increased now from sre point of view the case will be similar so sre is evolving and it will take time for the companies to build this sre culture till then you know they'll try to manage the sre stuff with devops engineers or they hire sre engineers and because they haven't built the culture properly so they'll ask sre engineers to do the devops related task so this will keep happening unfortunately but once there is a clear difference once the sre culture is built across multiple organizations you will see these things happening very less question number 2 that is which has the better future i have discussed about the future of devops multiple times and i'll tell this again and again as long as companies keep moving towards the public cloud or even if they come back to the private cloud the scope of devops will be you know uh, very good because devops engineers are the one who have this skill set if you talk about public cloud today i can say 80 to 90 percent of the companies are on public cloud and who has the knowledge of all of these systems right who is the uh, you know person if you talk about designation so which person has these skills as close as possible it is devops engineers right to set up this required infrastructure or you know to automate the required things on your aws to reduce the cloud cost of your organization devops engineers are the one so the future is going to be very bright and even if you are planning to move from public cloud to private cloud again there has to be someone who has to set up this required infrastructure on private cloud you know set up the required load balancing set up the required api gateways devops engineers so the future of devops and cloud is going to be bright talking about sre i personally feel sre is going to have a very brighter future because going ahead we will be used to accessing concurrent millions of request applications so like hotstar netflix amazon right uh, youtube so you will see more and more of these applications building right because these days everything is digital and people are moving towards apps who people are moving towards being digital many companies will move to digital going ahead banks will move to digital going ahead complete operations of banks i mean to say and every simple thing will move towards apps and as this very simple things move towards apps i'm talking about your regular day to day things if they move towards apps then that means millions of users will be accessing these apps and one of the key things is there is a saying in sre that is slowness is the new dawn that means today if an application takes 2 to 3 minutes to respond you will say that the application is down right if an application is responding you back in 3 minutes you will not say the application is slow but you will say application is down so slowness is the new dawn and to make sure this system is reliable you have to employ sre site reliability engineering so sre is going to have very bright future and you know if you are interested you can start learning sre right from today there is nothing stopping you there are so many resources available and i'll highly recommend devops engineers to build up the sre skill of course you need to learn devops first so if you have learned devops first then also try to understand what sre is because in future devops engineers are the one who are going to move towards sre because you have the you know most common skill set of course devops and sre are quite different but today devops engineers are the one who understand monitoring the most right you understand monitoring the most you understand uh, golang scripting the most or the golang programming the most kubernetes controllers right building uh, monitoring alerts all of these things devops engineers know the best so i'll i mean i'm sure that i see that if sre is growing then devops engineers are the one who are moving towards sre with their interest right so both of them have better future and i will highly recommend devops engineers to understand about sre read more about sre and learn sre number 
So number three is which skill set is suited for DevOps and which skill set suits uh, SR engineer, SR engineer, right? So here, you know, you have to understand the roles and responsibilities of DevOps and roles and responsibilities of SRE. So for DevOps engineers, the required skill set is you need to learn about CI/CD. You need to learn about uh, configuration management, infrastructure uh, as code or infrastructure automation. You need to have good knowledge on shell scripting, Python, containers, Kubernetes. So this is the required skill set. Of course, the public cloud like AWS or Azure. Talking about SRE, the required skill set would be to have good knowledge on scripting as well as programming. Yes, SRE engineers require programming skills. And if you ask me, the more and more as SRE keeps growing, Go language is the one that uh, SRE engineers will use. Right now, also many companies use Go language for SRE engineer because the target systems are in Go language, right? For example, Kubernetes is a system that is on Go language. Prometheus is on Go language. Uh, any any system that you are talking about uh, right now in the cloud native space, most of them are in Go language. So SRE engineers, as I have seen, I talk to most uh, many uh, SRE engineers and they use Go language. So these are the required skill sets for the, uh, SRE. So if you are good at programming and Apart from that, as an SRE engineer, you should also be up and uh, available for uh, production support. You have to be okay working in shifts, right? You have to be okay working in weekends because your responsibility is to keep the system available 24 by 7. And that requires you to be up all the time. Of course, you work in rotational shifts, but you have to be ready for that, right? And finally, question number four is that which technology offers better packages? Right now, SRE is niche. That means many less people know SRE and many less companies have employed SRE. So probably that's one of the reasons I can see SRE engineers have better packages compared to DevOps. And one more thing is because SRE is also available in companies like, you know, the top companies where they are dealing with uh, concurrent millions of users. So of course, for them, you know, they'll not be bothered about the package of the candidate. They'll be looking at the candidate and if the candidate is good, they are ready to pay as much as possible. But another thing here to take into consideration is the company also, right? So you should compare DevOps engineer. If you're taking about TCS, let's say you should compare DevOps engineer in TCS versus DevOps engineer in TCS. DevOps engineer in Amazon versus DevOps, uh, sorry, SRE engineer in Amazon. I'm taking that factor into consideration, right? You cannot compare DevOps engineer in one company with SRE engineer in the other company. And why is this happening? Because right now the skill set is with very less number of people, right? SRE skill set. That's one of the reasons. So I hope I have answered all of your questions and I hope it is very clear to you. So this is the video for today. And if you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section. I'm more than happy to help you. Thank you so much. See you all in the next video. Bye-bye.